Hi to there folks, I'm Gene of RPG. Welcome back to more MS Saga, A New Dawn, almost a year later. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I don't want to keep dwelling on things, but I've been pretty busy. But more than that, I had to replace the game. This also means that this is another new playthrough, and this is the last time it's going to be a new playthrough. Don't worry, I've worked out all the kinks. <clears throat> but some key differences. I'm slightly lower level, and uh, Tristan's in a dom. That's about it. Otherwise, I believe everything's basically the same. But yeah, I decided to have Tristan be in the Dom this time around instead of the uh, Gof because we've seen the Gof plenty. Plus, personally, I like the Dom better. Maybe it's just me, but yeah, I like the Dom better. Anyway, to summarize last time, we did a lot of shopping. We also I also showed you guys the preferred enemy, at least my preferred enemy, for farming for money. And we learned that Mr. K has a hideout in the mountains to the west of town. And so, we're now going to make our way to the west of town to see if we can find him. Also, I do not remember what enemies we've seen in this area, so I'm going to assume we haven't seen any. So, things might be a little redundant in that, which, uh, if that's the case, I apologize, but, well, that's just how it is, because I don't remember. Anyway, we've already seen the Zaku charges, I'm positive, but the Buster Zaku is actually a surprisingly difficult enemy. Um... <laughs> It's got the large, well, that is if you don't kill it right away, but it's got the large uh, heat hawk, like what Tristan has, and uh, it knows how to use it. It's it's going to hit you hard with that, or it's going to use the powerful shoulder cannon it's got, and yeah, it powerful ranged attack, powerful melee attack. It's It's got what it needs to do the damage. That said, it doesn't have a ton of HP. It's not the worst thing ever. It's definitely not my least favorite enemies to encounter in this area. But it is something to keep an eye out for, because it likes to get mixed in with uh, mirror ghosts, actually, to be specific. And since our primary weapons for ranged attacks right now are beam rifles, well, needless to say, that kind of messes things up a little. Oh, a golden GM. Uh, that's actually rather unexpected. Okay, so... You guys already know the process for this, but I figure out why not. Since I ran into it on the way, I'll show it again. I'm going to have Tremmy use power up on Tristan. Uh, Aeon's going to Terror Mind, and Tristan's going to charge. Next turn, we're going to use Power Charge and hopefully kill the Gold GM. And now we're just going to we're, we're just going to shoot it. Easy smeezy. It's super easy to take out gold GMs. They're so great for farming money. They're also pretty good for farming ECAP SS and smoke bombs, which those are going to be so helpful later. Smoke bombs are amazing. Any of those? Here we are. We're at Mr. K's hideout. This looks like the place marked on the map. I'm detecting incoming mobile suits. A large number of them. This must be the hideout then. Come on, guys. Let's go. Although there's... Uh, there's mobile suits everywhere. We've been fighting them nonstop. But those are the kind of things you're not supposed to think about. <laughs> halt! I do not wish to use violence. Leave this place immediately. Hey, I know that voice. Lee Fong, is that you, sweetie? You, you're the peeping Tom from earlier. Imagine meeting you all the way out here. Must be fate. Fate? Yes, it would seem that we were destined for this encounter. Good, I'm glad you feel the same way. Now come, leap into my arms. Leap? I prefer flying kicks. Very well. I'll humor your request. And mini-boss time! Vargas, what is this all about? Explain yourself! This, my dear, is the fateful reunion of a man and woman romantically bound! Are you sure this romance of yours hasn't gone sour? Don't be jealous, Trevi! Even you can't deny our love! 
You idiot. Why do I even bother? <laughs> Fine, you can explain later. All right, but here we go. We're facing off against Lee Fong's gun cannon, which does not function like a normal gun cannon would. Uh, she prioritizes punching attacks. You might notice the claw, she, the claw hand she has there. <laughs> which, I don't know, that makes me laugh. But anyway, we're going to have Vargas hop out, and he's going to charge. And then I also want Tristan to charge. And Trevi's just going to shoot Lee Fong. Lee Fong has something like 1,200 or 1,300 HP. She doesn't have that much, but uh, the Enhanced Claw hits pretty freaking hard. <laughs> Lee Fong's a very dangerous enemy. We're going to go ahead and Beam Rifle. I want Vargas to use Leg Snipe. And Tristan is going to Counter Zone. But the leg snipe of Vargas's will drastically cut her speed. Ah, pilot damage. Yeah, that's an unfortunate effect of the of the claw is that it has a heightened chance of inflicting pilot damage. Uh, let's go ahead and have Aeon hop out. She can kick out an arm snipe. If Aeon was the same level she was at the end of the last part because I know she learned Bit at the end of that. Then I just use Bit, and that absolutely destroys this boss. But she doesn't have Bit yet. She'll get it soon, but she doesn't have it yet. Because this is a new playthrough, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. But Lee Fong likes to use Gatlin Punch after two attacks, and uh, that hits pretty hard. You want to make sure you're defending against that. Otherwise, though, yeah, we're, we're actually just about done here. Let's go for a Mega Slash. She doesn't have that much health left. Yeah, see, I knew it. We were close. Ah, speaking of Bit, there we go. Aeon learned Bit. I'll explain what that does very soon, because Bit is amazing. You defeated my Hosho Ken? How can this be? It was one against five. Don't be so disappointed. The odds weren't exactly even. That doesn't change the fact that I failed. Now hurry up and finish me off. If you're ready to give it all up, why don't you come with us? What? Yeah, really, what? <laughs> also, I love that face. Join our cause. Fight with us. This is impossible. I serve Mr. K. I would rather die than betray him. Oh, goodness. Why are you working for Mr. K? You know how crooked that guy is? Well, allegedly, we don't really know if he's crooked or not. How dare you insult him? Everyone in town respects Mr. K. Come see for yourself. We shouldn't be too far now. Very well. I will call your bluff. But if you're wrong, I'll see to it that you pay. You know, even though we, we already beat her up. I, I don't know how she'd do it. But with that, Lee Fong has joined our party. Yay! Great to have you with us, Lee. Do not speak to me. I may be here, but I am not with you. Huh. <laughs> Playing hard to get now, are we? Tell me, what did she mean by peeping Tom? It's nothing. Never mind the details. This man looked up my skirt while I was descending some stairs. Up your skirt, Vargas! Explain yourself! For the last time, this is all a misunderstanding. Uh, excuse me, but could someone please tell me what a peeping Tom is? It means a pervert. A p p pervert Whoa, now, Tremmy. Aeon, allow me to explain. A peeping Tom refers to a certain type of petty criminal. Does this mean Vargas is a petty criminal? Oh no, you see, he's been an all-out felon from the start. Th that's enough, Gavinger. You're not making things any better. Ah, my apologies. I can't believe I lost to you people. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, but first things first, we need to get the hurt healed off. Also, we're going to touch the save point. There we go. So, Lee Fong has joined our party. Lee Fong specializes in punching attacks. She's a martial artist, after all. 
And as you can tell from her stats, she is one of the two most melee dominant characters in the game. She also has the worst ranged stat in the game, so guns completely worthless for her. Uh, despite the fact that she's piloting a gun can in a mobile suit that is actually meant to be a ranged mobile suit, but we'll get into that later. She's, act she's plenty effective with her melee attacks though, and she has a lot of punching boost attacks. Punching boost attacks are amazing in this game. It's unbelievable. Lee Fong's one of my favorite characters to use, and we're definitely going to see see more of her as we go through Wyvern Ravine. But for now, we're going to head up towards the, the block to the right, because, well, that's a branching path. I know for a fact this way leads to a dead end. Which, <clears throat> means treasure typically in rpgs if a dead end's actually ever a dead end in a game that actually that, that kind of bothers me a little bit but yeah my hosho ken doesn't need weapons well she needs to punch my gatling punch boost attack can take out a legion of enemies and by that she means one enemy not only does it decimate mobile suits but it injures their pilots as well yeah punching boost attacks have a heightened chance of increasing hurt which hurt lowers all stats. It is amazing. <laughs> but I've already described hurt before. Here we have Leos, which like I said, some of this might be redundant because I don't remember if I've talked about these enemies or not. I probably have. But Leos are not the first enemies we've seen from a different mobile suit timeline than the Universal Century. I believe that goes to the Death Army mobile suits. But these ones come from another different timeline. These come from the, uh, I think it's called Another Century. It's the Gundam Wing universe. And I actually love the Leos quite a bit. Uh, that said, there's nothing to really worry about with the Leos. Their whole thing is just bombarding you with the drum machine gun from a distance. I don't think they even do melee attacks. I know they have beam sabers, but yeah, I don't, I don't think they ever do any melee attacks. Uh, they have, I think, like 200 HP, something like that. They're not that bad. Mostly, they're just cannon fodder. But they do have chances of dropping drum machine guns, and they're actually pretty common drops. Tristan learned Gatling Body, which I think he learned at the end of last part as well. Gatling Body fires any attached weapons. Not weapons, like, or any attached ranged weapons, rather. Not weapons that he has, like, say, a beam rifle and then a machine gun. No, those won't fire. They have to be attached to the mobile suit. So anything built into the mobile suit naturally, or something like a gun shield or arm machine gun, something like that. You get the idea. Those will all fire. Uh, that said, they're not exactly the best weapons or that's not really the best boost attack for Tristan, considering he's a melee-focused character. But enough of that. We have GM Slashers. Uh, or we did. <laughs> uh, the GM Slasher has a Shock Saber. The Shock Saber is different from Short Circuit. Shock is a different status condition, and it stuns a... It stuns... Um, it stuns a character for, for the rest of the turn. This can also knock them out of defend out of uh, defending. It's annoying, but it's not the worst thing ever. As long as you can outrun an enemy that has shock, you should be fine. Here we found a double cannon. The double cannon is a, well, I'd say powerful shoulder-mounted cannon, but it's actually quite dated at this point. It's only got 100 attack power. A regular beam rifle has 20, has, I'm sorry, not 25, 95. And our long rifle has 135, and it can be used for sniping, and only takes 3 energy to use. The double cannon is outdated. Which, of course, means that uh, we're going to sell it for money later. Because, even though we're past the first major shopping point in the game, of the game, there is a second one, and uh, a third one as well. But, yeah, we'll get to those when we get to them. But here we have two GM Slashers and a Dom Knuckle. Okay, so the Dom Knuckle is pretty dangerous. Like, pretty darn dangerous, in fact. Uh, let's prioritize trying to take out the GM Slashers, though. Get the Dom Knuckle alone. 
The Dom Knuckle uses punching attacks. It's not all that different from Lee Fong, actually, but it likes to use counter zone, so we're going to avoid physical attacks for the most part. Oh, that's just slightly away from being able to finish that thing off. Uh, but this is going to be a good fight for us to see Bit, I'm, I'm willing to bet. Ow, as you can see, it hits like a truck. But that's about all it's got going for it. It's about to die. So the way Bit works is that it does a, not a, necessarily a set amount of damage, because there is a variance to it, but it does damage. And then it splits that damage based on the number of enemies there are. It's not an even split. It will randomly split it. But if there's only one enemy, then they take the full brunt of that damage. And so this thing's going to take, what, like 500 damage. 495 damage. And that's per turn, for the record. <laughs> we could just keep using that over and over again. And it's amazing. Bit is a boss killer, and it's only the first of those kind of moves. Uh, we're going to use Counter Zone with Tristan, because it's definitely going to use a boost attack, obviously. But I don't want to burn through all our TP, because we're, we, we, we're only getting started with Wyvern Ravine. We still have a ways to go. And there's some tough fights here. For beating the Dom Knuckle, though, you get high Zack spikes for the right shoulder. The high Zack spikes are shoulder armor that belong to the high Zack, which I think I've talked about already, but I'll talk about it some more later. In that chest, we get Kim for data times 10, which is nice, but not something we need. I'm going to recommend you guys avoid this chest. It contains a ranged weapon that is horrible. Only has 98 attack power. Yeah, only 98. It's colossal. It's It can't be used with most boost attacks. It's just bad. It's a bad weapon. Don't waste the hacking tool. I recommend keeping it. If you're looking for to just get everything in the game, well, then you may want to get it or remember that it's there and come back later. Uh, we're going to use escape because there's nothing else on that branch of the pathway. And this way, I don't have to spend TP to heal. Haha. -ha. Because I'm going to be utilizing bit a lot going forward here. But this time we want to take the left path in the fork. Alright, but here we go. One of my least favorite enemies in this area. Uh, the Shield Dom. Okay, so the Shield Dom, I'm, we've probably seen it before, but again, I don't remember. The Shield Dom is a heavy defense punching mobile suit that... It, it takes an awful lot to get through its defenses. Luckily, Tristan's already out, so we have everything we need to get through it. But they're really obnoxious, especially when they start throwing like four or five of them into into a single fight, because then it just takes forever. It just, that's And that's really what the big problem I have with it is. It just takes forever. Like, see, our beam rifle just did seven damage, and that's it. Luckily, one power charge from Tristan will probably kill it. We can expect to see more and more of them, though. Uh, let me see. Right. Branching pathway. The bottom one doesn't lead to another room, which means there's a chest. Ha-ha! I know structure. And five repair kits. That's nice, especially since I don't think I really have many repair kits on hand on this one. I, I was kind of gunning it to get caught up to where I left off. <laughs> which is also why I'm at so much lower of a level. Well, I say so much, but it's only like one. All right, well, new enemy, kinda. A mirror cannon. The mirror cannon is very similar to the mirror gof, except, you know, it's a cannon. <laughs> I, I know, it's shocking, but I mean, uh, this might be a good time to bring it up, though. Bit, even the, despite the fact that it's a bunch of little things shooting lasers out of them. 
Uh, it, it doesn't count as a beam weapon. It doesn't count as any kind of a projectile weapon. It counts as a technique attack, like how the grenades do. And so you could use it in that fight and not worry about it at all. Or you could just slash them to death with the beam sabers, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, it's the kind of thing I don't want to think about. Vargas leveled up and learned Counter Snipe. Counter Snipe would be an amazing boost attack because it interrupts any any enemies doing that are planning to do a melee attack and makes it to where they actually waste their energy and miss their turn. The reason I say it would be a great boost attack is because, well, there's a problem with it, and that's that it costs something like 8 energy to use. It's ridiculous. It takes way too much energy to use it. And that leads into one of my big issues with sniping boost attacks, but I'll get into that later. For now, we have fights against two Gians. We're going to actually switch Tristan out here because he's going to not do so great because he's got to do melee attacks to do damage. And the Gian, if you remember, is a melee-oriented mobile suit. So instead, we're going to switch to the... Oh, I meant to, I meant to fire. Damn it. Uh, we're going to switch to ranged weapons instead. The Gians, as you can see, have short uh, uh, short swords, I think they're called. <laughs> as dumb of a name for that as it is. They are stronger than the beam sword that Major Reznor had, but they can inflict short circuit. Oh, plasma sword, I'm sorry. Uh, they're surprisingly dangerous. Uh, because short circuit... It'll keep you from doing anything. It's basically a worse version of Overheat. Though, they both pretty much put a crimp in the plan. Crimp? Is that term? Well, regardless. The Gans themselves are a little tough for regular enemies, but they're not the worst thing ever. We can get through them pretty fine. Short Circuit does go away after battle, unlike Acid. We're going to be seeing Short Circuit a lot going forward. Not quite as much as Overheat, but enough. What a joke. These enemies are hardly worth my attention. It is not they who are weak, but you who are strong. Okay, thanks, Yoda. <laughs> but tell me, what is a martial artist like yourself doing in a gun cannon? A gun cannon? What are you talking about? The name of the mobile suit you're piloting. It isn't exactly ideal for close combat. <laughs> I'll have you know that this is that this mobile suit is a Gundam. An extremely powerful close combat prototype. I've seen a Gundam before and it didn't look anything like that. That can't be. You must have been mistaken. I saw it in Isengrad. I'm certain what it was. Th then that means... How could I have been such a fool? Eh, don't be so hard on yourself. I don't know anyone else skilled enough to use a gun cannon in melee combat. Really? <laughs> so my training is paid off then! Yay! <laughs> uh, okay, so that establishes a couple of things. One, Leaf, and we're going to learn this later. Lee Fong's not very good with machines. Like, that's one of her traits. She's actually pretty bad with machines. Uh, I do not remember if this is the mandatory way or not. I think it is. We're going to turn around. And instead, let's go this way. Uh, might not... Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. That is a lot of slashers.
But let's see if I'm right and this is the way to to good stuff. Oh yeah. Woohoo! Alright, but we have two Guillens. Oh boy, that went so well last time. And a Guillen launcher. Okay, so let's start by prioritizing the Guillens. Let's also kick out some bits. Because you don't want to underestimate the Guillen launcher. It's actually going to hit pretty hard. But since there's three enemies, that 495 to 500 whatever damage it does is split up. And as you can see, the bulk of it hit the launcher. Kind of wish it was spread a little better, but that is one of the downsides to bit. It's not very great for groups of enemies. Uh, it's going to do a boost attack. Damn it. It's going to be a bad boost attack. <laughs> you know, as opposed to a good boost attack. I don't know. All right, but we're going to have Tremie fire. I want Lee Fong to defend, and I want Gavinger to fire. I want the regular Guillaume's gone. All right, there's a Giga Flame. Hopefully that's hitting Tremie, actually. Oh, good, because Tremie's immune to overheat. Okay, let's go ahead and get Tristan out. So he can kick out a Mega Slash. We're going to defend with Lee Fong one more. Once more. Uh, and let's Beam Saber with Gavinger. Oh, damn it, Tristan. Come on. All right, let's get Vargas out. Vargas is going to go ahead and snipe assist. Li Fong is going to use her very nice Gatling punch. And we're going to have Gavinger defend. Oh, shot burst. Oh, thank goodness. I thought that was Li Fong for a second. But there we go. Not the toughest enemy ever. In fact, Chaff Field completely shuts it down. But from that, we got the Spray Launcher, which uh, I forget. I know it's a shoulder-mounted cannon, but I forget how good it is. And an ECAP S, which is always welcome. Oh, which reminds me, I believe my ECAP S count is different. But let's look at the Spray Cannon. Uh, yeah, it's actually moderately well are moderately decent. It has 108 attack power, which isn't great, admittedly, but it's not that big of a of a shoulder-mounted gun. And so it's it's not terrible, but our long our long rifles definitely still the way to go. We just don't have the room to stick it on. But it's not a bad weapon. All right, over here we got a signal flare, an energy pack. That's nice. And inside of this chest is actually one of the better treasures in this place. The Missile Shield. Uh, we're going to put that on Gavinger, actually. The Missile Shield is, well, the Guian Shield, technically. But it's got a uh, relatively powerful ballistic, non-beam-based ranged attack that takes two energy. It also has 22 to defense and a whopping minus 20 to speed. But that doesn't matter as much as you might think. I want that on Gavinger because he doesn't have have the uh, bullpup machine gun. Plus, he kind of needs the defense a little more because he has counter zone and all that. But anywho, folks, I think this part's gone on long enough. Next time on MS Saga A New Dawn, we're probably going to finish up the Wyvern Ravine. I'm Gene of RPG, and I'll see you guys then.